know God's promises, but we are not to wait to with the facts. But we should get to know the facts that are in the Bible that are for us as Christians. So the second thing I want to look into, and it's this word, we've gone from promise to fact. And the next word is, is a covenant. And in the Bible, God made several covenants with different people. We have the Abrahamic covenants, the Noahic covenant, the Abrahamic covenants. There's many covenants in the Bible. But what is a covenant? A covenant is a contract. A contract that is an agreement that is enforced by law. Okay, so technically, when you get married, well, you got young people get married. Listen very carefully. When you get married, it is a contract. It's a legally binding a piece of paper. I remember. You get this little piece of paper from Maryland State, and you got to sign your name. She signs her name, the date, and then the person that married you signs their name. And then they pass it in to the government, and then you are officially married. It's not the ceremony. The ceremony is just a ceremony. It's a piece of paper that marries you. It is a legally binding contract. And you can't get out of it. Well, nowadays you can. But it costs you money. A lot of money sometimes. It's a legally binding contract. And it's enforced by law. So if I say, hey, I don't like your wife anymore. I want to get another one. I go get another wife, and guess what happens? I'm in trouble. Because I'm legally married to one person. So the law is enforced. This is what a contract is. Or you buy a house. And then you must pay this much money every month. And if you don't, the contract says that this will happen. And then you disobey and then it's enforced by law. This is what God has done with us. Why would God make a contract with us? Turn to uh, Genesis chapter 15. And we'll read when Jesus, when God made a covenant with Abraham. Genesis 15, oh, verse 6 is an amazing verse. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. That's an amazing verse right there. The greatest verse in the Old Testament. Now let's jump down to verse 9. And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram three years old, turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took him all these and divided them in the midst of laid them, uh, and laid each piece one against another, but the two birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down from the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep, deep sleep fell upon Abraham. And lo, a horror, a great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a certainty that the seed shall be a stranger in his land, and not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall be afflicted them four hundred years. How long were the children of Israel in Egypt? 400 years. Verse 14. And also the nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall come out with a great substance. And thou shalt go out to thy father's peace, and thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, and the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And it came to pass, when the sun went down, and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between the pieces. And the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. This was the Abrahamic covenant, and what happened is, it was kind of like this. There was an aisle, and on each side was the one half of the animal. It was the heifer, the goat, and a ram, two halves, and then the doves were on each side not split. And what would happen actually is you would walk down the aisle together. Actually one started from each end and you would 
meets in the middle. And you would make an agreement together. You would make a covenant. You would make a contract together. And this was legally binding in Abraham's day. So why did God do this with Abraham? Does God need Abraham's help? Does God need our help? Why does God make contracts? Why does God make covenants? This is an amazing thing. Because when God makes a contract with us, He limits His own power. He limits Himself. He limits Himself according to the contract. So if God says, hey, I'm making a contract with you, and um, I will give you a new car, I will give you a house, and uh, a bank with $10,000, okay? God has to perform it. If he doesn't perform it, then legally, by law, he's in trouble. God, legally, by his own law, would be in trouble. You know, and that's what God has done, is he has limited himself. He says, I know I'm all-powerful, I don't need you. I'm all-knowing, you know, there is no limits to me and who I am. But I will limit myself to help you. Because when God limits himself, when he makes a contract with us, what he is doing is he is saying, that's, hey, you can trust me. You can trust me. It helps us to understand who God is. It helps us to understand who God is. Every time there is a covenant made, we see who God is. And we also know that God will keep it because He legally has to. He legally has to. Isn't that amazing? I think that is one of the most amazing things that God would limit Himself to help you and me. He limits Himself to help us become stronger. Here's a, a list that I have. God's promises and facts are based on God's justice. Because God's justice will not suffer him to be faithless. So the promises, the facts, the covenants are based on God's justice. Because his justice demands that he is faithful. His justice demands that he keeps his promise, that he keeps the facts that he abides by the law. Because if he disobeyed one promise, only one, or if he did not fulfill one fact, or if he disobeyed one little, as the Bible says, tittle of the law, he is no longer just. He would be an unjust God. But we know that God is just. Therefore, everything he does is according to God's promises, facts, and covenants are based on God's holiness. God's holiness will not suffer him to deceive. You know, a part of uh, holiness is a lack of deception. When you deceive somebody, you're not being holy. He cannot lie to us. He cannot deceive us because he is holy. God's promises and facts and covenants are based on the grace of God. God's grace will not suffer him to forget. God's grace will not let him forget. It is, what is grace? Grace is receiving something you don't deserve. Okay? God cannot forget what he has given you, even though you don't deserve it. God's promises, facts, and covenants are based on God's truth. God's truth will not suffer him to change. Because of who God is, he is all truth. He cannot change. You know, and there's Bible verses for every one of these. That God is gracious, God is holy, God is truth, God is just. Every one of these, there's a Bible verse. The last verse is Hebrews chapter 11. It 
This is a continuation of the Abrahamic Covenants. And the book I just held up is called The New Covenants. And really what the New Covenant is, is the Abrahamic Covenant continued. It is a covenant, it's a contract that God made with Abraham. Continue on us. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay? So the first thing is that our faith has substance. There's meat. There's a reason for our faith. It's not what people call blind faith. Oh, I believe in God. I can't see him, so I just have faith. No. There is substance. There is substance. And the next thing says there's evidence. Okay? So this really means that there is scientific, there is historical, there is, there is evidence, and there is reason for us to believe in Christ. There's reasons. Just because you don't see something doesn't mean it exists. There's plenty of evidence that th does that. But let's go to verse 8. By faith, Abraham when he was called to go into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing where he went. Okay? By faith, Abraham went out. By faith, he sojourned in, in the promised land, land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him. And the same promise. And he looked for a city for which foundations, whose builder and maker is God. You know, God made a God made a contract with Abraham. Did Abraham ever see the contract fulfilled? No, Abraham died before it was fulfilled. Imagine God making a contract with you. You're 99 years old on your deathbed, and you haven't seen the promise fulfilled. But he had faith. His faith was based on what? It was based on substance and evidence. You know, today, there are promises that God has given us, and there are facts that are in the Bible that we don't know about. And the covenant that God has made with Abraham, there's also covenants with us, and we don't completely understand it. And will we ever completely understand it? No, we will not. Will we ever read every 8,000 promises of God? No, we will not. We will not understand this completely. But we should do what Abraham did. He did not see the end of the contract. He saw bits and pieces. And he had a son, right? Isaac. That was one part of the promise. He saw little pieces. And the promise became fat. And God was faithful to him. He didn't see the complete thing. But it says that he had faith. He endured till the end. You know, I ask us that in this life, there will be things that we do not understand. Martin Luther, when he was reading the Bible, and he would come to something he did not understand, he would take his hat off and read it again. You know, when you take your hat off, it is it has the idea of respect and reverence. He did not try to understand the verse according to his own knowledge. He just respected the word of God as the word of God and says, you know what? I don't completely understand what you're saying there, God. It's a mystery to me. You know, in this life, there will be things that we do not understand. Are we going to be bitter at God when these things happen? Or are we going to have faith, just like Abraham, in that God is who he says he is, and the facts will be facts. He will keep his contracts, and the promises will be met day by day. What shall we do? You know, I pray for myself, I pray for you guys, that's Though this life is tough and we go through many difficult circumstances, that we can be like Abraham. And we can stand tall and we can say, I endure till the end. And then in time, we'll see everything clearly. Heavenly Father, we thank you.
these words. Thank you for promises, 8,000 promises that you've given us. We thank you for the facts. The fact is, is that I, my old man is dead, Romans 6, 6. The fact is, is that I am seated in heavenly places, Ephesians 2, 6. Lord, we just thank you so much for these facts. Help us to understand them. Help us to grow in Christ. Lord, strengthen us. Strengthen this church. Thank you for this church so much. In Jesus' name, amen.